Ms. Weiss to the theater, please. Ms. Weiss to the theater. Hello? Hello? Hello, Shannon! Hello. You look very familiar. Please, take a seat, Shannon. I have someone who would like to speak with you. Okay. Hello, Miss Weiss. From the very beginning of the year, I knew you were going to be a great teacher. I enjoyed all the icebreakers we got to do at the beginning of the year, but what was really special is how you continued to care about the students as the year progressed. Like when you let us write about what was happening outside of school. You were so proud of me when I passed my driver's license test. Shannon, do you know which one of your students is speaking to you? Of course, that's Robin. You are correct. Wait, now I recognize you. You're the host of that game show where teachers try to guess which students they've positively impacted throughout the school year. Right you are. Shannon Weiss, this is your classroom. Welcome to Launch Your Classroom, I'm Kyle Pope. We're well into the school year, slowly inching closer to the final day of classes. For many of you, the beginning of school may seem like a distant memory. After all, you've accomplished so much. You've developed new lesson plans, created engaging activities, and made your way further and further into the curriculum. Hello? Johnny, did we forget to change out the light bulbs? Huh, putting in some new ones now. Sorry about that. As we continue through the school year, it's important to not only move forward through our lessons, but also maintain the foundations of a positive classroom. The most critical of which is a strong student-teacher relationship. Remember all the icebreakers and rapport techniques you used to build bonds with your students? Those were great. But like anything else, if you go too long without doing proper maintenance, it will begin to break down. Teachers must reach out to students throughout the year to connect to them in meaningful ways. So today on Launch Your Classroom, we're going to discuss how you can continue to maintain positive student relationships. Let's take a look at our first strategy. Teachers know that it's important to check in with their students about how they're doing in class. However, if they only ask about their instructional development, it might send a message that all they care about is their academic performance. The two-week check-in strategy will give you the chance to get to know your students while also building rapport. First, you'll meet with the student virtually by asking them to fill out a questionnaire about themselves and their interests. Two weeks later, you'll follow up with an in-person conversation based on their responses. Provide a list of several questions and have them pick three to answer. Since seeing my dad perform at the Poetry Slam, I've really enjoyed writing some of my own. I really want to focus on it. Huh, looks like Jasper is really getting into poetry. Good for him for trying something new and challenging. He is gonna love our upcoming unit on haiku. I'm gonna make a note to talk to him about this in our next meeting. Two weeks after the first virtual check-in, schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with each student outside of instructional time to discuss the questionnaire and any new developments from their life. Scheduling will keep you organized, and the students will appreciate the face-to-face -face time with you. The wind blows tall trees back and forth. The falling leaves fly free and float. That's great, Jasper. I just love lyric poetry. You know, next week we're starting a new unit about a different type of poetry called haiku. The rules are completely different, but I think you'd really enjoy the challenge. Really? That sounds exciting. Maybe I'll try one before the lesson. 
After this in-person meeting, repeat the process. Ask them to revisit the list of questions, updating the same ones from before for extended reflection or exploring different ones. Once you get a sense of the student's interests and with their permission, you can include those in your lessons for future engagement. Good morning, Jasper. Hey, we're starting that lesson about haiku today that we talked about. You still comfortable sharing yours with the class? Absolutely, Mr. Johnny. Okay, class. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a Japanese form of poetry called haiku. Now, the most common form is a three-line poem about nature with a five, seven, five syllable pattern. Who knows what that means? It means that the first and third lines have five syllables, but the second one has seven. That's right. Class, during our check-in meetings, Jasper has expressed an interest in poetry, and he's been working on some of his own. He's agreed to share an example with us today. Take it away, Jasper. Stone, wood, and water, deep breathing among nature, fresh air, and forest. The two-week check-in strategy will build strong student relationships as they share more about themselves. Remember to talk to a school counselor if they share anything concerning. It's important to create opportunities to discuss topics beyond your students' classroom achievements. By connecting individually with your students on a regular basis, you will demonstrate to them that you are there to support them and help them grow. Students feel more connected with you and their peers when they get to share their individual interests. And because students grow and change throughout the school year, so do their hobbies. For this reason, teachers cannot simply rely on what they learned about each student at the beginning of the year. Instead, they should create opportunities for students to discuss these shifting interests with the class. Here are some easy ways for you to include valuable interest sharing time into your lessons so you can use what you learn to build student engagement in your content. One of the easiest and quickest strategies is a simple turn and talk. Set a timer and give your students just a few moments to discuss a new favorite TV show, video game, or book with someone sitting next to them. Join in on the conversations and listen closely to what they share with one another. Then use what you learn in this short, non-academic conversation as a hook to your instructional content. Try some curiosity questions. Have your students share hobbies and interests with one another and provide sentence starters to help them ask further questions to learn more. Then let students report their findings and updates about one another as class posters, comic strips, or a simple whole class discussion. Students love investing in one another, and this helps to build a positive classroom community. Too excited about your content? No problem. You can add it into the conversation. Have your students use their new vocabulary words or ask them to relate personally to a short story you have read or an event you have studied. Just make sure that the focus of the activity is on your students first and then the content. Enlisting student engagement is worth the short breakaway from your curriculum. You can get in on the fun. Each time you set up a paired or group activity, join in, making sure to work with every student over time. This gives you a chance to model the activity, show you're interested in learning about all of your students, and demonstrate your willingness to share your interests too. By taking just a few moments away from your curriculum, you will actually gain time by building student engagement quickly. These interest-centered activities will also let your students know you care about them beyond your content which will motivate them to invest more time and energy in your class. Welcome back viewers to This Is Your Classroom. Shannon, are you ready for another round? Yes, I love hearing from students. Okay, student two, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, Miss Weiss, at the first of the year, I remember you asking us to tell a little bit about ourselves, but I didn't feel comfortable talking in front of the whole class. 
You kept trying to get to know me, even talking to me in low pressure situations, but I still wasn't sure what to say. Then one day you noticed some of my art and were so kind to ask me about it. It's so nice having a teacher who cares about my interest. Shannon, can you guess that student? That's definitely Sarah. Her artwork is so wonderful. Once we were able to make that connection, she became way more engaged in class. You kept trying, and you finally found a way to reach this student. Great job. This is your classroom. We'll be right back after these important professional development messages. Some students are just easy to develop a relationship with. They are friendly and talkative, and conversation flows. When they need help, they ask for it. And if they don't, then they let you know. Then there are the students you get to know quickly out of necessity. Students who need more of your time and attention because of academic needs or behavior concerns. But what about the quiet students, the ones who sort of blend into the background? These are the students who don't really excel or struggle. You know their names, you have a general idea of their academic standing, but what do you really know about them? It is important to reach out and become better acquainted with every student, not just those who stand out for one reason or another. Just because a student keeps to themselves doesn't mean that everything is going well. Hiding behind a shy exterior could be a student who may be struggling to understand your content, feels lonely, or is going through a difficult situation at home. Without proper attention, these are the students who may experience significant academic trouble or can develop negative behaviors later on in the year. On the other hand, you may also find that the quiet student has some really unique perspectives and interest to add to the classroom dynamic. Finding a way to learn more about those students can enrich the classroom environment and your efforts will show that you are interested in them. After a break, it is important to take the time to reconnect with all of your students, to remind them of your expectations, check in with them academically, and to let them know that you care. So how do you do that with students who don't communicate as openly? Be persistent and observant. Notice the unspoken clues the student gives every day, such as a favorite snack or lunch item, and use that information to start a conversation. Give your class a choice of assignments on a topic and pay attention to what your quiet students create. Watch them at recess or in the cafeteria to see how they interact with their peers and with whom. Assign open-ended writing prompts, read their work, and respond in a way that shows that they are visible to you. Remember, every student needs your attention, even those who are quiet and never disruptive. By building connections with all of your students, especially your overlooked ones, you will win their trust and engagement in the future. Patrick, please see me at the end of the school day. For now, we'll all continue on with our writing assignments. It's inevitable that throughout our teaching careers, we'll have some challenging interactions with students. When situations like these arise, the focus should always be on repairing the relationship. Not only do you risk losing your students' trust and damaging rapport, but how you handle the situation will ultimately teach your student how to deal with conflict, so it's best to do it carefully and with intention. Luckily, I have my handy first aid kit ready to help me mend my relationships with my students when these situations occur. I can be confident that my interaction with Patrick later today will be productive if I remember to use these tools that I have here. First, I'm going to practice empathy with the student. Then I'll make a point to take ownership for any part I played in the student's misbehavior. Next, we'll problem solve to avoid this situation happening in the future. Finally, we'll move past this incident together and start fresh. Hi Patrick, have a seat. How are you doing? I'm okay. 
Before getting started, remember, it is really important to come to these conversations with a clean slate. Your conversation will not be productive if you hold your students' behavior against them when you meet. Hey Patrick, earlier today I could see that you were frustrated, so I understand why you acted out. You can show empathy with a short verbal statement to help your students feel seen. Don't try to explain that you know how the student is feeling, but speak generally about how emotions can affect the way we behave. This will encourage your student to participate in the conversation more readily. Oh, you can? I guess I was frustrated. We all get frustrated sometimes, Patrick. We were covering a lot of content today, and maybe I presented the material a little too quickly. Taking ownership, when appropriate, is a crucial part of mending any relationship. When a teacher acknowledges their part in a misunderstanding or conflict, they should explain themselves and apologize sincerely. The added benefit of taking ownership is that it models respectful behavior to your student. I appreciate that, Mr. Pope. I'm sorry, too. I could have raised my hand for help instead of being grouchy and acting out. Thanks, Patrick. I appreciate you recognizing that. What can we do to help us move forward? And what do you think is an appropriate consequence for what happened today? Shared problem solving is when both parties come to an agreement about what to do next. If your students are younger, you can guide the conversation, but the outcome should always be mutually decided. When your student is given the opportunity to discuss consequences themselves, they're more likely to make meaningful changes going forward. Well, I know I disrupted the lesson earlier. Is there anything I can do to help the class? Sure, Patrick. I could really use some help setting up the next bulletin board tomorrow after class. Thanks for meeting with me today. We'll start fresh tomorrow. Starting fresh is very important for building trust with your student. They'll know that you haven't held a grudge against them for their previous misbehavior, and they will appreciate your confidence in their ability to grow. Thanks, Mr. Pope. I'll see you tomorrow. Although sometimes it's hard to see while in it, conflict creates opportunities for us to grow as individuals by becoming better communicators. It also helps us to learn from our mistakes and each other. The next time a challenging situation occurs in your classroom, you'll be able to navigate it smoothly with the aid of these techniques. Building strong student-teacher relationships at the beginning of the school year is essential to establishing a positive classroom culture. We know that these beneficial interactions lead to increased student engagement and less behavioral management issues. So teachers must be careful not to ignore these relationships, but instead make a concerted effort to reach out to students, whether it's the first month of school or the last. Remember, with proper maintenance and upkeep, your investment will last. This month, on Launch Your Classroom, we'll continue our discussion on maintaining student relationships. We'll provide you with another strategy that will help you connect with students who are returning from a break. We'll sit down with an expert educator to discuss questions teachers have about maintaining student relationships. Then, to finish the month, we'll have some tips on how you can maintain colleague relationships. So be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get all our upcoming content. And check out LaunchYourClassroom.com for all your professional development needs. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Launch Your Classroom. Welcome back to This Is Your Classroom. Shannon, we have one final student for you today. I can't wait to find out who it is. Well, you won't have to wait long. Student three, you're up. What's up, Miss W? I remember when I was first put in your class, I didn't want to be in school at all. Nothing personal. 
I can admit that I was disrespectful at times. Why do we need English? I'll never travel to England. When you asked to talk to me after class, I thought you were going to lecture me about my behavior. But you said that you understood there are other things that I'd rather do than school. You even made me a deal that if I finished my classwork that I could have a little tech time. I appreciate that you worked with me and not against me. Thanks, Miss W. All right, Shannon, do you know who that was? It was Kate, who did an awesome job on her recent assignments, I might add. Congratulations, Shannon. You guessed all three students correctly. You've truly done a magnificent job developing and maintaining student relationships throughout the school year. Thank you, Rachel. It's been a great experience learning about my students and being on this game show. Thank you, Shannon. And tune in next time when we surprise another teacher on This Is Your Classroom.